Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Delaware Technical Community College. On behalf of our entire college community, our board of trustees, faculty and staff, and especially our students, and we have students here this morning, this wave so we can point you out. Yes. We are proud to host our governor and lieutenant governor as they announce their most recent investments in Delaware workforce. We also welcome members of the General Assembly who are here this morning, as well as members of the governor's team, his cabinet, invited partners, as well as members of the business community who are here to support this announcement. Uh, governor, the last time Rod Ward and I were in this room, we were working on executive order number one. So it was a good, good thing to reminisce about. So as you know, as Delaware's community college system, we've been fulfilling our mission, providing a high quality workforce for local business and industry for over 50 years. Our graduates provide our state's businesses with job ready employees on day one in every sector of our economy. Allied health, law enforcement, education, IT, advanced manufacturing, and as Representative Minor Brown can tell you, nursing. She's one of our grads, so it's always great to have you on campus as well. With over 100 market-based programs, Delaware Tech works in lockstep with our business community, state policymakers, and our community. And we rely heavily on those partners for support to fulfill that mission. Obviously, without the resources to develop, equip, staff, and provide these programs, we would not be as successful we've, as we've been over the last 50 years. And that's why we're especially proud and grateful to host this event. Governor Carney has invested heavily in our state's education system and has also made higher education a priority as part of those investments. The governor's fiscal leadership during the early years of his tenure, things that we can forget, uh, they were rough times, but his vision and leadership in fiscal management led to significant investments later on that have allowed Delaware Tech to strengthen and create programs in healthcare, diesel and auto repair, construction renovation, and especially important to our future, expand opportunities for high school students who are seeking high quality, hands-on learning in high demand sectors of our economy. And the McCain High School class that we have with us today demonstrates that. Across this plaza, thanks to the critical capital funding from the governor and members of the General Assembly, Delaware Tech is completing a $24 million investment in a 43-year-old building that represents not just a commitment to our students, but a commitment to the city of Wilmington that the college will remain in Delaware's urban center to serve the next generation of our community's needs. So again, thank you, Governor Carney. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Hall Long, and all of our representatives and senators here today who have invested in Delaware Tech and making projects like that possible. And one final thought before I introduce our governor. I'm going to go off script a little bit, but I have a couple important points to make. Obviously, we're all here in person, uh, and that's unique for Delaware Tech. We've, we've really struggled to navigate these last 18 months in a safe and healthy way. But our state's numbers are looking pretty good. We have rising vaccination rates, declining COVID rates, and it really indicates an optimism for the future. Businesses are once again getting back to pre-COVID level levels. Our schools are welcoming back their students. And for Delaware Tech, we look forward to a spring semester next January when we can offer even more in-person, on-campus classes. Like so many organizations over the last 18 months, this virus has been very difficult on many of our students. And it's been a difficult time for us in trying to support them. In my view, we're here for one reason, leadership. Thoughtful, deliberative, steadfast leadership. Back during the height of this pandemic, when the state needed it the most, our governor provided the leadership we needed to successfully navigate the most challenging months of this past year and a half. Now, we all know we're not out of this yet. Our country and our state has a long way to go. But I also know that our governor's 
spent some years playing quarterback, and he was quite successful at it. He's, a, he's used to Monday morning quarterbacking. I don't think he was used to the type of Monday morning quarterbacking that occurred last year. I think it was unprecedented. But I also know that as a Delawarean, I am very grateful for his leadership. And if you don't think leadership matters, take a look at other states. See what they're still going through. And we're having events like this, thanks to leadership. So with that, I'd ask you to give a warm Delaware Tech uh, welcome to our governor, John Carney. Thank you very much. That's a live mic. Thank you very much, Mark, and thank you to you and your team for the tremendous work that you do here at Dell Tech and what you're doing now with your facilities, with the resources made available by the General Assembly. And there's no stronger supporters of Delaware Tech and its mission than the members of the General Assembly. Many of them are here uh, this morning. I had a whole series of talking points that I wanted to run through, but when I walked in the door this morning, I saw Doral Green and a group of, of students, 11th graders from McCain High School, and I'm gonna ask them to stand up for a minute if they would, please. So these, these students <laughs> represent Minor Brown. I think you have something to do with these students as well, teaching them here, here, here at Dell Tech. These students are in allied health related fields, and they're at Dell Tech juniors now, and they do some time here at uh, at Dell Tech and they will graduate and be ready to go into the workforce. And they represent, frankly, what we're doing here and announcing with respect to spending up to $50 million on developing a workforce of young people like these, people who are older or in the workforce now, people who need additional training to get to, to move up in whatever field they're in to move into another field. And so as I think, Mark, about the challenges that we face, that, that I face as governor and that you help us to deliver on is developing a workforce that makes Delaware competitive, that allows Delaware businesses to, to be successful because we know the most important thing for a Delawarean is to have a good job, to be able to support their families, to be a positive impact on, on their communities. And if we don't have successful businesses, guess what? We don't have jobs for the people that need them. So to those of you that are here from the business community, who make possible the jobs uh, for these young people. And you can, you can sit down now. <laughs> you look like. Uh, to, uh, I see Scott Malfitano back there, who's the chair, the new chair of the Workforce Development Board, and Gary Stockbridge, I don't think he's here. Uh, his predecessor, all members of the pr private sector that have worked on workforce development. We hear constantly Rod Ward is my co-chair with the Delaware Prosperity Partnership sitting up here in front, runs a successful business here, and we hear constantly from site selectors that the most important thing above regulations, tax policy, all the rest, which are important, is the availability of a skill, skilled workforce. And so the idea, Representative Blunt Rochester, that we have funds from the American Rescue Plan to put to these programs, to expand these programs as we're proposing to do today, to do more with our Delaware for Forward program, which identifies and targets high demand jobs in the workforce and gives, uh, through Dell Tech and other w means, certificates for mostly young people, mi but mid-career people as well, to move into those, to those jobs. The thing that I hear most from employers today is carry is they can't find the employees to do the jobs that they have. If you look nationally, there are 10 million people that uh, there are 8.4 million people that are out of work. There are 10 million jobs that are that are open, which means there's a disconnect between the labor force that's available and the jobs and the job skills uh, that are that are necessary. So this this announcement. Uh, using up to $15 million of federal ARPA money for these programs is critically important for the success of our individuals, students, and families, and for, uh, ultimately for the success of our state. And it's, it's a, both a short-term challenge and a long-term challenge. One of the expansions that we're talking about here today 
with our Pathways programs, which Dr. Bunting, you and your team have done just a tremendous job in expanding that by thousands of students each year, and this, will, uh, this uh, expansion will enable us to reach about 80% of uh, high, Delaware high school students and getting them into a work-based program so they can know more about the, the opportunities out there. But our ability to, to train this workforce on the short term, as well as to reach back and prepare middle school students, which the expansion of Pathways will, will enable us to do, is critically important. We have employers today that can't keep their restaurants open every day of the week because they don't have servers and they don't have cooks and they don't have the various employees that they need. We have construction sites that lag on because we don't have skilled trades folks. Mark mentioned our partnership with respect to diesel mechanics. We're actually getting some more diesel mechanics through the pipeline, both for, um, for Secretary Majewski's team at Dell Dot. Uh, and for uh, big installations like the Dover Air Force Base. So I want to thank everybody in the room. We also have funders from out of state uh, that have come here and are partnering with us in the expansion of the Pathways program. And if, you, if those funders could just stand up and allow us to thank you for your support and for your endorsement of what we're doing here in Delaware. Thank you for, for that. So we're going to hear more about uh, these programs from Secretary Hubbard at the Department of Labor um, and from our, our Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, who's also going to, uh, going to introduce the star of the morning's program, which is Amani Wolf Cochran, who's a student at uh, St. George's. She, they said to me, that's amazing, you wore the St. George's color in your tie today. And I couldn't help but say, well, it's also the Dell Tech color. So I, had to, I covered two bases there, I guess, Amani, but it, it was really the Dell Tech uh, colors thing. But, uh, but to, to all the folks that do the great work down there at St. George's, uh, we're delighted to have you with us this morning. Our Lieutenant Governor has to run quickly out. She's probably uh, de delivering vaccinations on a corner somewhere across our state, but she's here to, to add some thoughts. Lieutenant Governor, how long? Notice the nurse. There's your mask. Uh, yep, yeah, we have to. We have to. Representative Minor Brown, the nurse, understands that. Well, good morning, Governor. It is a wonderful morning when we can get together and celebrate economic workforce development in our state. And Mark Brainerd, Dr. Mark Brainerd, uh, Dell Tech, the community, has really embodied the best in partnership with education into our community. So let's give it up to our host and his team who made us safe today, COVID compliant. Thank you uh, to each and every one of you. And Governor, as I was driving here this morning, I thought, you know, a year ago in two weeks today, many in this room who are partners recognize the term joint accountability. We handed to you, sir, with Secretary Bullock, the Pandemic Resurgence Advisory Committee report. And in that report, we had the best of business in Delaware, we had the best in healthcare, and the best persons represented equity in our community. And we were fortunate, thanks to our congressional delegation, to have CARES Act funds, which we invested in the community. But we didn't know about the long term. And so having the leadership that we have with Senators Carper and Senator Coons and our Congresswoman and President Biden for building back better with our ARPA funds, we just want to say thank you because now we know when we handed you the report to the governor that we had to have a healthy community to have a healthy economy. Well, we're getting there with the healthy community part. And the governor's right, lots of vaccines, a lot of work to be done. But to get to the economy is so critically important. And I think to members who are here from our Restaurant and Hospitality Association, today's a big deal. Part of that $50 million is going to go to retooling and retraining and the front line and our restaurants and hospitality. I also look to Secretary Majewski, who's sitting there behind her mask with uh, Del Dot in the minority work that we have to do with women and minorities in construction. Really important effort that has to continue to occur. And you were part of the conversation and at the table. And following me this morning, we're going to have our phenomenal Secretary uh, Hubbard, who's going to share with us some of the programs, as our governor mentioned, around 
I know I'm ready, you know, for the path forward with the Department of Labor and the wonderful programs that you're uh, launching there. It's so incredibly important. And when we take a step back and we really think about uh, the economics and the path forward, we know it's about our young adults here. And again, to the McCain High School CNA trained partnership under the prosperity model and this extra money with the partnership, thanks to you, Secretary Bunning. And Lou Ryan, I saw you hiding in the back. We know you have a little role uh, in the back of the Department of Education and your hard work, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, we recognize that we're going to make an impact in our communities, in our state. But to our Congresswoman, again, we just say thank you for being here. I know your other partners we had with us yesterday from the Senate, how hard that they have been working uh, to make sure we have these funds available. And I have to always shout out Claire DeMattias, who has kept Governor Carney's office and all of us on track with pen to paper. I want to thank you um, for making sure that we are putting forth our funds uh, together to make sure that we are having that impact. So I just want to conclude by saying I will have to depart a touch early because in Delaware, we are putting a mark on the map, a mark on the map. STEM is so important, and I am fortunate, some of you know, I chair the National Million Women Mentors. So across the nation, we're working hard to roll up our sleeves to get women and minorities into the STEM field. And through the Hunt Institute, which I know Dr. Mark Brainerd and our other departments have worked, it fits nicely into this pathway of success. And I can't wait when I leave a little early today to talk about what we're doing in Delaware. We're putting a mark on the map around best practices and workforce development, our investment in our young adults, and into the business community that is here. And I know Rod's going to talk a little bit about that. But we are light years ahead of other states. And thank you to those of you who sat at the table with the PRAC report, who's joined us today to really make sure that we are stronger in our community and in our state, not only with STEM. And Imani, if I don't get to hear you, you are that rock star. Our governor did wear the right colors today for St. George's. But we do appreciate the work that you recognize and that you really epitomize for Delaware uh, because you are about the early learning path, which is one component. So as I wrap up, think about the pillars that we're going to hear about, right? We're going to hear about long-term investment, not only in the workforce that's been impacted by COVID, but the long-term investment that we're going to have in our youth and our children. 6,000 more children are going to have this opportunity in middle school, and we're going to move that needle from a third of only women in STEM and in women in construction less than 5%, 1% if you look at the minority population. So Governor Carney, thank you for this investment. Thank you for recognizing what Delaware needs to be stronger and healthier. So with that, uh, one of our partners who has participated every week, every month, and every call that we have ever had to give direction to leadership in our community, and that is Secretary Hubbard. Um, I could give her a drum roll, but I know she won't like it, so she'll, she'll be blushing. But she is truly a phenomenal, compassionate, caring secretary. And uh, I, too, think she might be Secretary Love 2.0. Congresswoman Blunt Rochester uh, labels herself as the former Secretary of Love. I think I found the Secretary of Love 2.0. Thank you, Secretary Hubbard. Come. Good morning. Thank you for that introduction. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Governor Carney, Lieutenant Governor Ha Long, for providing this opportunity to celebrate this administration's continued commitment to workforce development. Our economy is only strong when it's workforce, and that strength is bolstered by a system that provides workers with access to the skills and training needed to be productive and contribute to the economy. This notion was borne out during the early days of the pandemic when Governor Carney tasked the Department of Labor and the Workforce Development Board with reskilling and upskilling workers who found themselves out of work. We know that 75% of those individuals who lost their jobs during the first months after the pandemic began had a 12th grade education or less. That meant 
we needed to develop solutions that provided individuals with credentials to enable these workers to access better jobs. With the support of this administration, $16 million in CARES Act funding was targeted to an investment called Forward Delaware. Forward Delaware is job training that initially targeted the areas of healthcare, IT, construction trades, hospitality, food service, and logistics transportation. That initial $16 million investment has paid off. Some 4,000 Delawareans engaged with our 26 contracted training providers. These additional American Rescue Plan dollars will help us continue that work. Delaware's workforce development system, including many of the organizations represented here today, is wholly focused on the goals of preparing people for employment, helping workers advance in their careers, and ensuring a skilled workforce. Successful workforce development efforts increase our population's employability and can change the economic traje trajectory of low-income and less educated workers and their families by fostering economic mobility. This mobility contributes to increased consumer buying power. And when the workforce development system can meet employers' needs with a qualified, skilled workforce, business productivity improves. We know that this is important work. With this additional funding, we can leverage lessons learned, target emerging training needs, and continue to reskill and upskill Delawareans to meet the needs of employers. We are very proud to continue this great work that began with Forward Delaware to help the state's economy move forward. Thank you for your support. And I have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Rod Ward from the Rodell Foundation. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. So one of the un unattended consequences of the last 18 months is that my college-aged son fancies himself to his parents' chagrin as quite the poker player. Uh, so uh, he plays virtually, he plays with friends. Last summer, uh, I broke up a game in our garage, and he said to me, Dad, we are social distanced, <laughs> social distance <laughs> poker play. So what is poker playing for? Oh, OK, good. I want to know that just because. Anyway, where am I going with all this? So if, if he, Luke, I am not going that we think we should add a pathways for, for, <laughs> for poker. But what I am saying is if he was here, what he would say was, we have a very good hand, and today is just a lot stronger. It's just we just we, we've dr drawn some very good cards and we have a very good hand to play. I'm Rod Ward. I'm president and CEO of CSC, but uh, one of the jobs that I really love is I'm the chairman of the Rodell Foundation, and just a wonderful institution that I think everyone in this room knows. Uh, and I'm so glad that Susan Buttinger is here uh, today to to be with us. But. Uh, what we're so excited about is back to that analogy of the poker hand. And so there's just a lot of things aligning, right? We have a new workforce development plan. Uh, we have new leadership. The governor mentioned Scott, somebody that I work with closely. Uh, the public and private sector coming together, which has proven to be a very successful model here in Delaware. And of course, career pathways, right? And then we have the collaboration of so many different state agencies. I mentioned Luke and then Secretary Bunning at the Department of Education, right? Uh, Carol Hubbard at, at Labor, um, the school districts, uh, the charter schools. Um, you think about the private sector, United Way, Junior Achievement, and then uh, constituents that I represent, the Business Roundtable, the Chamber of Commerce. I just see Mike Caranta here who runs the Chamber of Commerce. And so it's really great to see all that collaboration going on. And then you add uh, today, we talked about the national funders, right? And uh, as the governor mentioned, and there's, we have three national funders, which is really remarkable. Bloomberg, 
the Walton Foundation and ASA, and, uh, and representatives from Bloomberg and ASA here today as, as well. And then finally, let's continue with the poker analogy. If you watch Texas Hold'em, they have the river card, which they flip over. And the river card has got to be our federal, uh, this, this, what we're announcing today, or, or learning about today, the federal uh, money that's coming to support this program. And so just a you know, shout out and thank you very much to uh, our congresswoman and to, and to the governor and to Claire, as, as mentioned before. But why, why does this, you know, what does this do in terms of the perspective from Rodell and from the business community? So quickly, uh, you know, we already had a very strong program in our career pathways, right? It was just remarkable where we've come in the last three years from just tens of kids involved in this, tens of high schoolers to over 20,000, now 23,000. As the governor mentioned, almost 50% of our high schoolers participate in the program. With this new surge, we're gonna be able to go ahead and, and get up to as high as 80%. We have about 100 businesses that have participated all of this, and with this, we're gonna double that to 200. And we're going to move down into the middle school, you know, so in fact as many as 6,000 middle schoolers and start tracking what they want to learn about in terms of their careers. And so just right there. And then finally, uh, be able to, that back end system in terms of our data system to sort of measure and measure what works and uh, what we need to do more of and what we need to improve on. So as you can see, uh, we had a very good hand and then walking out of this door today, we have a great hand. But like any good poker player, we have to play it. So thank you very much, and I'm more than privileged to, uh, to recognize and introduce uh, Lisa Blunt Rochester, our congressman. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Rod, for the introduction. And um, I want to thank our host, Dell Tech, and Mark Brainerd for his leadership. Um, I have to say, over the years, it's been exciting to work with him. Because, you know, this, this institution has been flexible, has been responsive, has been equitable, has been forward thinking. And so I want to give all at Dell Tech a round of applause for their leadership in this, in this moment. Um, I also would be remiss if I did not just really shout out the governor and lieutenant governor. Um, I call them the dynamic duo. Um, they are a team that uh, has just led, as we have said, in a very challenging time in our country, as well as in our state. And he has brought um, the dream team with him, uh, with the cabinet secretaries who are here today, that are really making a difference. And, um, you know, earlier it was said that, um, that I, uh, I think the lieutenant governor said I dubbed myself the secretary of love uh, under Tom Carper, but I did not dub myself that. <laughs> it, actually, Tom Carper dubbed me the secretary of love. Um, but I can say um, it was one of my favorite jobs being secretary of labor for the state of Delaware. I got a chance to work with people like Alexis Andrianopoulos, who is now working for, for the Votech school district. Um, I got a chance to work with so many incredible people, and I got a chance to be in a cabinet um, with maybe twice, with, where we, we were in two cabinets together actually with John Carney. So I'm glad to be here um, today. And I know we've shouted out a lot of folks, but I also want to shout out our state treasurer, Colleen Davis, um, because when these dollars have come into this state, uh, particularly the American Rescue Plan dollars, a lot of municipalities and entities, like in Claire DeMatteis, I mean, the fact that we've had to ramp up very quickly and help get the money to the places that need it the most, I want to thank them for their work in making sure that the money gets to the right places. Thank you to the legislators, the council people, um, Spiros, all, everyone who is here today, and um, also the public-private partnership. I mean, I think that's what this is really about. And I was talking to Carrie um, about the restaurant industry and how they're able to make it during such a challenging time. This really is about the power and possibility of partnerships. The power and possibility of partnerships. 
Um, Carrie knows because um, they took me around to some of the restaurants when we were talking about the, uh, the, the, the first project that Carol was mentioning, the, the, um, Delaware, the forward program. And I thought back to my role in Congress. I started out years ago, my first job was McDonald's on Market Street. So for all of the students, um, that was my first job. Uh, from, from McDonald's to the Congress, from that house to this house. And, uh, but the reality is, um, I went to a McDonald's in Kent County um, in my term, and they put me behind uh, the drive through window and put the headset on me. I, I, I was like Lucille Ball in the candy factory. Like, the, the, like cups were flying out. My earpiece was talking to me. I, I did not even know how to handle the automation and what was happening. So the reality is, the world of work is different today. That's why this is so special. That's why this moment is so important. So us announcing that $50 million is going to be targeted, and 15 specifically, um, to make sure that we go from um, workforce to 2.0 is really, really important. I even got a chance to go to Germany in the EU and to talk about apprenticeships. And the fact that, again, the jobs today maybe don't require a four-year degree. So I introduced legislation and partnered to have short-term Pell Grants to be able to help. This is about responding to this moment, responding to our current workforce. That $15.8 million that is going to be put forward for Delaware Pathways is for our future workforce as well. It's the current and future workforces. Forward Delaware, Pathways 2.0. On behalf of the senators, we are glad to advocate for Delaware. We are glad to fight to make sure that Delaware gets its fair share because we know that we have the need right now. The pandemic only exacerbated the challenges we already had. The pandemic removed four million women from the workforce, and only half came back because of a need for childcare, which means it's important that we not only have people that can work in those industries, but that they are paid a respectable wage so that they can be independent and that they can support their own families. When I traveled around in August, whether it was a sub shop in Ellesmere to an advanced manufacturing plant in Kent County to a child care center in Rehoboth, there were two issues that came up. The number one was workforce. The other was also supply chain. Today, I hope to be introducing a piece of legislation on supply chain bipartisan. But the funding that we got here today is going to help us to address workforce, the number one issue. So on behalf of the delegation, I just want to thank all of the partners. Um, Rod talked about poker. Um, I'm just glad it's not solitaire. <laughs> we are in this together. And I am so proud of the students that are here, the educators that are here that make it possible. And I know, I know um, that this is our time. This is our time to build back better. I love that. I love that build back better. I love that. I, look, I, now I'm starting to get the goosies, as they say. <laughs> And, and, and I wouldn't, it feels like it wouldn't be a moment if I didn't talk about the fact that I'm a member of the Beehive, meaning I am a fan of Beyonce. And this is our time. She has a song where she says, you must get information. We need information, which is what we're getting. But we also have to all be in it together. And so it is my honor to introduce the star of this morning the rock star, the guiding light, the representative of the young people in our state. Imani Wolf 
Cochran will speak to us. She's a senior from St. George's. Her career area is early childhood education. She's won gold at the state level for Ed Rising and placed fifth nationally. She also leads the St. George's FAM Forever a Movement chapter, which focuses on diversity, equity, and inclusion. But more importantly, she is the face of our now and our future. Ladies and gentlemen, give a warm round of applause, a Delaware round of applause to Imani. Good morning, everyone. I am Imani Wolf Cochran, a student at St. George's Technical High School in the early childhood career area. I am so grateful to be standing before you today, choosing a district that honors an innovative learning space and employment opportunities was one of the best choices that I've ever made. At St. George's, I have been taken, I have been taking high school classes working in my career area, and also enrolled in dual enrollment. When I graduate this May, I will not only leave with a diploma, but with two certifications in TECE 1 and 2. This means that I am fully equipped to enter either the workforce or a college setting. Thank you. I would like to invite you into a glimpse of my day. I usually attend my standard core academic courses, which are your English, your math, your science, your social studies, and Spanish. I make the transition into my early childhood classroom for three periods of my day. While in early childhood, I integrate theorist practices within our preschool at St. George's. The Preschool at St. George's is a student-led initiative. We make the connections with the students and their families. We plan out the lesson plans using early learning foundations, and then we apply that knowledge into our practical practice within the preschool and the preschoolers. I think that it's very important to acknowledge that it's one thing to understand and learn um, how to navigate a space with 13 students, and it's another to actually be actively engaging with 13 students. Um, <laughs> so I would like to share one of my experiences. So I was talking about how it is important to actively engage with 13 students. It's one thing to understand the challenge, but it's another to actually do it. It's one thing to sit in circle time, plan your lesson, and then have and think that it's going to go great, but have a student cry about how they want their mommy or throw up a temper tantrum in the middle of your circle time. Trust me, it has happened. <laughs> Rather than scare me or turn me away from this profession, this experience has solidified my passion and desire to become an educator. Career and technical education, like the one offer at St. George's and within the Newcastle County Votech Vot District, is prepare students by giving them opportunities. The welding students are learning how to weld structures. The te information technology students are learning how to code. The dental assisting students are learning practical things within that industry. And the, finance, the, students of a student, the students of academy and finance are learning how to manage real money. Now I need you all to say this very important line with me. There is power in our choices. And our choices will determine our destiny. Thank you, and I truly believe that. Your investment in this type of educational experience will definitely benefit thousands of students like me who will graduate from high school with experiences that cannot be found at a traditional high school. 
So I'd like to thank you today for making the choice that will change the world. Thank you. How about that? How about that? Glad I don't have to run for re-election for this office. Good Lord, Joe, your Dell Tech, your Vote Tech folks must be so excited to have students like that. I know it's she's not the only one, but she was a, a great representative. I'm not a poker player. I'm not a card player. I don't play solitaire, so I don't know how to. I love the solitaire thing. That was awesome, right? I got it. Come on, give us, give it up for that. I mean. We are not playing solitaire here in D Delaware. I mean, all the folks around here, we're playing a group uh, game. Uh, Rod, thank you for your leadership uh, and uh, for the leadership of the state, the state chamber. Tech Impact, I see in the back of the room. Working together, we can really make a big, big difference. We can cultivate the kind of students like Amani that you just heard. And we have to do it. We have to do it for their sake, and we have to do it for the sake of the larger community. I do want to ask Claire DeMatteis to stand up and be recognized as well. Claire, please, please stand up. <clears throat> we don't just, like, people always compliment me, Governor, thanks for doing this. We don't just, I don't just make this stuff up. Like, we don't just say, oh, like, we want to do that. That's a good idea. Claire has gone to outreach and engage legislators, communities, business groups, labor groups, everybody. This has been a very inclusive process. At the end of the day, we have to, you know, make some decisions. But if you think about the three things that we've announced so far, they're essentially building on that strong poker hand, to extend the, the analogy. We, we set aside or setting aside uh, over $100 million for the extension of broadband in the lower part of our state, something that we've already invested a significant amount of money in. We're investing today in workforce development programs, the expansion of our Pathways program, which has been extraordinarily successful, successful as Rod has pointed out. And coming from the business community, that's what's important. If it's meaningful there, if it's making a difference there, that's what uh, we're trying to do. And yesterday, we announced a significant investment in a program that's five years old with lots of momentum, lots of great things happening in the northeast section uh, of Wilmington here in Reach Riverside. An unbelievable project. And our $25 million investment will, will leverage hundreds of millions of dollars of construction investment and a holistic approach to building back better that community which has struggled over the years. So, I get a lot of credit for this, but let me just tell you, it starts with all of you, and it starts with Claire and her engagement with all of you. And I just want to close by thanking you for the great work that you do in workforce development in our state and look forward to doing more. Thanks very much.